Hi friends, this is Annie Grace, author of This Naked Mind, and I am answering questions of readers. Um, I've had a huge list, and actually this is the last question on the list. So if you have a question for me, just private message me or put it in the comments, and I'll keep answering them as long as people are interested and have questions to ask. So definitely send me something if you want me to answer it. Um, but today's question is from Sarah. So Sarah says, I'm in early stages, nine weeks alcohol-free. Awesome, congratulations, Sarah. And I'm feeling a tremendous amount of guilt and regret, mainly around bad decisions I've made in the past, even to the extent of questioning relationships, etc. I've been reading a lot about this, and apparently it's, quote, normal to be on an emotional roller coaster when first becoming sober. Sobriety usually means facing up to the past, and the individual can feel guilty about their previous bad behavior. But too much guilt can drive a person to relapse, so it's very vital to think keep things in perspective. Do you have any words of wisdom to offer around this issue? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I never ever in my life read a self-help book until after I published my own book, which is kind of funny. But then you, you know, I, I started to get so many recommendations from books from people that just, you know, my book resonated with something else they had read. And um, I started reading tons of books, like crazy. Like I was, I actually tallied it up last night. I've read 39 books so far this year, um, which is probably why I haven't gotten much else done. But I think that, you know, and I've read a statistic that actually people who really take the time to know themselves and read those books and go into kind of the work of just being comfortable in your own skin are the happiest people. And I have to say, I've gotten tons from these books. And I think, um, I guess that's a bit of a tangent, but but my point is that when you stop drinking, you have time. Because alcohol takes time away from you because it's something to do, and when you're doing it, you can't do much else. Um, and then alcohol also takes away your capacity to make really good decisions, and it takes away your memory. So when you're not drinking, you have time, and you start to remember stuff, and you have the time to think about it and reflect on it. And that can be really hard because in essence, what it means is that if you were using alcohol to self-medicate, like most of us do, is that you have to become comfortable in your own skin. And so it's like this, this triple whammy almost because you've got all this time, you've got guilt and regret, and you're starting to remember things that you did when during your drinking days. So there's a huge chance you don't feel good in your own skin. And then you compound that with the fact that the thing that you went to when you had those feelings of anxiety or guilt or remorse was alcohol, and you don't have that to do anymore. So my friend Lee, he calls it the white space, and how do you fill up the white space? And I think, you know, really focusing on getting healthy inside yourself is really important. So that's kind of what I'm going to focus on today. But I will tell you, Sarah, like I am hit with waves of regret like years later, like two days ago, I woke up and our neighbors are moving. And so they left and it was moving day and the new neighbors are coming in. And I just was thinking about it and we moved. I don't know. It's been a few years. Um, and I was like, oh, but I was drinking when we moved. And I was thinking about it, definitely it was like moving day, so you're drinking, you know, it was kind of day off work, whatever. I couldn't remember the color of the moving truck. I couldn't remember the day. And I just was hit with this like realization that that day does not really exist in my memories. And it was completely heartbreaking because it it's a very exciting thing to move houses, especially when you're moving to a house you've really wanted. And the fact that I couldn't, recall it at all I asked my husband I said what what happened like and he was trying to tell me and I was hoping to get a piece or two of the memories and they're just not there I mean they're just not there and I started crying and I was so upset and you know really sad about the fact that this day that's like kind of important was just gone and I didn't have a feeling about the day I just had nothing like it was just blank and um I was really sad and it was really easy to start beating myself up and I was just sad and crying and I just was thinking, okay, well, what can I do with this, you know? And then I was just struck by this really vital realization that, Annie, you don't remember that day so that you can remember graduation day when your kids graduate, so that you can remember their wedding day, so that you can remember their first soccer game. You don't remember that day so that you can remember all the days that are coming. 
And it was this moment of, oh, I see. You know, so often we're caught on the wrong side of the tapestry. We're on the making side where all the threads are and all the string is and all the chaos is. And we can't see what's happening. And then sometimes in our lives we get glimpses of the other side and we realize, oh, that, that mess, that was creating this. Wow, that's, that's big. That's a really cool thing. But I will say that that thought that came into my mind and reversed my thinking and my guilting and my self-loathing and my beating myself up, that's been a journey for me to be able to have that type of thought and then to be able to have the freedom and the gratitude that, okay, it sucks not to remember that day. But honestly, of all the things in the world that could be, like that's not that big of a deal and thank you that now I am able to remember all these days going forward and thank you that it's painful that I don't remember that day. Thank you that it's painful because now I know without a shadow of a doubt that I wanna remember my kid's graduation, that I wanna remember you know, their wedding days, that I want to not be drunk at their football games and not remembering their first touchdown, you know, like, thank goodness that that happened. And so I think that perspective and getting that perspective, it did, it took work, it took effort for me to really learn what I was thinking and to be able to try to see the positive in it. And um, I think that means getting to know you, you have time. And now that you're not drinking, it's important to get comfortable in your own skin. And since you have so much time and you don't want to relapse, this is a point in your life where it feels prickly and it feels awkward, but it's a beautiful time because you are incredibly motivated to learn about yourself and to learn how to live gracefully and joyfully and naturally in this world. And there's going to be few times in your life where you have this much motivation for change. And that's such a beautiful thing. So... Um, There's so many resources. I'll just share two books that I'm reading right now that I really enjoy. So I'm reading Awaken the Giant by Tony Robbins. And it's really good so far. I'm only like 100 page in. It's a beast of a book, but it's good on a lot of levels. One, it has a lot of the same ethos as this naked mind, the idea that one decision can change your whole life, the idea that your brain has neuroplasticity, you can change your happiness levels, you know, all of these things. And he wrote this book a long time ago, and I'm pretty surprised I hadn't read it before. But again, a reader recommended it. And I would say really good book just in learning that you can change, learning to let go of your thoughts, learning to be aware of your thoughts and realizing the incredible power you have within yourself to really be happy and and put um, these good things out into the world. And then the other book I'm reading right now, it's called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. And I'll put both of these in the comments below, but it's about just getting to know yourself. And I'm not all the way through it, but it's really cool because this book talks about all that shit, all that crap, all that misery, that's part of it. That's part of the path. The fact that I was drunk on moving day and I can't remember it, like that's part of the path. And um, it's so easy to beat ourselves up. It is so easy and it's so unproductive. And the first year that I stopped drinking when the euphoria kind of wore off, I had to realize that I was literally addicted to beating myself up. I was addicted to worrying. I thought, okay, if I worry about this, there's a chance it won't happen. And if I beat myself up enough about whatever it is, then I won't do it again. It never worked. It, it doesn't work. You cannot guilt yourself into change. You cannot guilt yourself into, you know, better behavior. It just, it really doesn't work. And even if it works, it works for a very short amount of time. There's dozens of studies that support this. Um, so what I would recommend, Sarah, is that at an absolute minimum in your journey right now, you know, not only look at it as this beautiful time of change, and although it can feel prickly, it is an incredible gift, but set this as a goal for yourself. At an absolute minimum, you need to treat yourself like you would treat someone else. And the terrifying truth, and I think it's a reason that we have so much heartache in this world and so much depression, is that we don't do that. We treat ourselves like shit. We talk to ourselves like we're nothing. We say the worst things to ourselves. And it's incredible when you start to realize that because at a minimum, so what I want you to do is start to listen to the things you're saying to yourself. And how you know that this is happening is you start to feel guilt or you start to feel anxiety and then just stop and say, okay, what did I just say in my mind? You know, like for me, it would have been, oh, Annie, God, what was wrong with you? Why did you have to drink so much that you can't even remember moving day? You know, write that down, write whatever it was that's making you feel that guilt or that anxiety, write it down 
And then in that moment, read it and say, would I say this to a stranger? Would I say this to a friend? You wouldn't. And you'll be appalled when you see that perspective change. Because So do that. And then really strive not just to treat yourself like some other person, but to treat yourself as if you're one of your children. And so I don't know if you have children, but if you don't, pretend you do, or a niece or a nephew, but treat yourself with the same love, compassion, and forgiveness and understanding that you would treat a child. And I realize this is much easier said than done. It takes effort. It takes stopping these thought processes, becoming aware that they're happening. But every time that happens, that is a gift. Stopping a negative thought is 85% of the battle. Being aware of a negative thought is 85% of the battle. Understanding and saying, whoa, that was really rude. You know, Annie, that is not nice to talk to yourself that way. That is like, you, that's almost a home run. I mean, that is where the change is, just in the realization. And so often we say, we realize, and then it, we pile on the guilt because we realize whatever, but no, no, that's where the change is, you know, and that's where the good. So treat yourself with the same love and kindness that you would do a child. And if you can find a way to do that, and there's so many resources, but if you can find a way to do that, your entire life will change. Everything will change. Be nice to you. And then it has these phenomenal ripple effects on everyone else around you and everyone else in your life. So that was a phenomenal question, very timely considering my own little bout of guilt and remorse this week. So thank you, Sarah. And again, this is Annie Grace, author of This Naked Mind. If you do have any questions, that was my last question. So please do post and blow, message me, and then I'll come back on Monday if I get any and I'll answer more. Have a great day. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.